Sandra Jacobson, Marketing Artfully. So today we're going to do an Etsy shop audit uh, of a very nice lady, who Andrea, who said I could do her Blueberry Mountain Naturals. Um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this was I wrote a big blog post that showed you all the different parts of things that you should do, ideas, tips, and then a big old checklist that you can just go down through and see um, what is what the things are that you should be focusing on. But I wanted to real quick do a video and show you, kind of talk you through it and give you an idea of things that you could look at. So one of the first things you wanna do is just kind of step back and take a peek and see what your shop looks like when somebody comes on a desktop. So this is um, Blueberry's uh, shop. You can see the really big um, you see the bracelet in action, you kind of get an idea, you know, that, oh, there's the tops of essential oils. If my screen was down all the way, you kind of see a little bit of tops of essential oils, which is awesome. Um, you know, you have a bunch of different things that you can see. I think it looks very clean. I think it looks very professional. Now, this is a really cool trick that you can do with um to see it on the on the phone what it looks like on the phone from your desktop which um some of you may may work exclusively on your phone then make sure you go to a desktop for those of you who work on a desktop all the time like i do make sure you check on a phone so on chrome you're going to right click you're going to go to inspect and right here there's a phone and a ipad you're going to click that to toggle it Okay, hold on. We're going to say toggle it. And it's going to show us, and you can't close that window or it goes away. Um, so it's a little kerfuffly. It's not super stable. You wouldn't want to do a ton of work on this. But seeing this, now we can see what it looks like on the phone. And I think it also looks really good. Like her, um, very colorful at the top. I kind of like how it frames it at the top. I don't use a banner. And so mine is just a big logo, but my logo's colorful. Um, this is gonna be personal preference, I personally think. Um, I think some people do that top banner logo very well. I think I've seen, um, gone through a bunch of different ones and it hasn't been like exactly um, earth shattering, like they just put a placeholder there, uh, but as you can see here, the logo is very prominent on the, the phone, so we want to do that. You also want to be really careful with your reviews because those are front and center on the phone. And from what Etsy tells us, like a majority of people that are doing searching and buying are looking on the phone. Okay, so let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. And we're back to the shop. Now we're going to start right at the top and look at her logo. I think this is a very clean professional logo. It's Blueberry Mountain. It's blueberries. It looks great. Um, you, her shop name, I don't think that you should change your shop name unless it's truly heinous or you've definitely changed entirely what you're doing. Say, um, oh, I have the perfect example. When I very started um, at... Etsy, I started with a shop named Work Necklaces because I thought I would really like making necklaces, and I don't. And so I have a vintage shop where I can just buy things that are already made. Um, I, I just opened a different shop, but had I been um, like transitioning my shop over or whatever, I would totally change the name because Work Necklaces doesn't match vintage, right? But if it's even close, the reason why I say this is because there's cascading problems that happen when you change your shop name. You have to change your social medias. You have to make sure you have it changed on your website. You have to make sure your business cards are, you know, so uh, that would be the last thing I would change after I have done all my listing, done all my SEO, done everything. Then if you want to change it, you can. Um, okay, so this is the tagline. Now, all these things can be changed. I'm going to, uh, hold on. So funny. If I just, I don't know why I always tell you guys to hold on. I could just not go away and you wouldn't know it. But um, I wanted to show you how to change this. So when you're logged into your shop, I always do it on the desktop. 
I'm assuming it works the same on the, the phone, but you're just going to click edit shop. And then you've got all kinds of things you can change. So you can, as soon as you click this, you could edit, and this is what's called your, um, your tagline, I believe is what they call it. For me, this should be somewhat descriptive. And then if you can make it interesting, more's the better, right? So I feel like um, this is essential, like if they said essential oils, diffuser, bracelets, that would be factually correct. I love that they added gemstone and lava because that makes it interesting. Okay. And um, I do have one of the, uh, one of these bracelets and it's amazing. It's really nice. And I use it for my essential oils. So it works great. Um, okay, so then you have where you're from. You can't really change where you're from. I believe Etsy pulls it. Let's see if we can change it. Oh, you can change it. Now, why would you want to change this? I will give you an example. Say, when I lived in Denver, in the Denver metro area, my actual town was called Westminster. But more people know about Denver, right? So I think I had Denver. Here, instead of um, Trinity, which nobody knows where it is in Florida, I could put Tampa. Um, it's just, it's, you know, if you live in someplace weird, change it. Okay, the number of sales. I feel like this is an, a, is an important thing. Um, a lot of people, if there's no underline, it means you've locked your sales so nobody can see it. Now, there's a reason why some of the gals do it, and I understand this. They lock it because people are stealing their designs or their ideas. And they don't want to show people what their best sellers are. Now, for me, there's a thing called social proof where human beings like to know that what they're buying is popular by other human beings. And I don't know why that is, but it's true. So I feel like if somebody was trying to make a decision between the purple one and the blue one and they saw all the people bought the blue one, they could go one of two ways. They could be like, oh, I want to be super unique. I'll get the purple one. Or they could go, oh, I want to be like everybody else. I'll get the blue one. But they can't do that if you've locked it up, right? So I have mine open everywhere. It's a personal decision. You get to make it. On Etsy, you don't get to change that. These guys are, um, like your reviews are important. Um, but these guys are... This is just so you could tweet out this store. I'll show you later on where you can put in your, um, you know, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instas, all that stuff. Okay, now we're going to go over to here. And I feel like this is super important and very neglected. Of everything that I did, um, people were doing this one the worst. So I'm thinking about buying this gemstone. I see this picture of these really cute ladies and I'm like, okay, cool. I want to find out more. And there's nothing. They're friends and neighbors. She's had an idea of creating and selling natural products. Andrea suggested using Etsy and here they are today. That doesn't help me. That do I want to know that Angie you know, travels to Hawaii every year. She loves Hawaii. She loves essential oils. Andrea is crazy about cats and this and that. And on, on, so number one, I want to show you my website. Okay. Um, because I sometimes think that Etsy sellers think everybody, um, like why does anybody care? But if you look at my about us page, I have, you know, all about me, all about being a marketing speaker, all about tell it like it is. They want to know about me. And then especially on, um, I have a, um, a product where they can talk to me. Well, they want to know about me. So I have a picture of my family. That's my daughter and that's my son. That's my husband. Um, you know, I'm not hand, my talks aren't handed off. So this is not just an Etsy thing. This is a human beings like to know who they're buying from, unless they're buying from Amazon. And we know they're buying from individual sellers a lot of the time, but unless they're buying from Walmart, unless they're buying from Nordy's, they want to know a little bit about you. So I would suggest filling this out, uh, to the best of your ability. Okay. Now we're moving on. We're going to start coming down here below all this stuff. Shop reviews again. And then we're down here to these updates. 
updates. Those are done through the phone. You can only do them through the phone, and I'm not sure I can really show you super well. Let me see if I can show you well. You're going to push, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that, but at the bottom right, at the bottom right, there's a little button that says more. You click on more, you go to marketing, you go to shop updates. And I like what she's done. See, this is three weeks ago. I went and looked at mine and mine was <laughs> super sad. Mine is like six months ago. It makes my shop look abandoned, so I'm going to have to do one. So I would say put this on your list for like once a month at the very least to take a little picture. Um, I love that this time of year she's doing, um, you know, pumpkin pie and apple cider. Excellent job. Um, you don't have to have a thousand of them. Just have a couple of them. This is your about you section. Um, and to me, this is the contact is about you. This is more about kind of your store and you. Um, so I like that she has this little picture. Her work area is shown here. Um, you know, how they work. I love it. It's a candid picture of these gals. They look happy. They look excited. Um, a bunch of their bracelets. You could put pictures of, like for vintage sellers like me, you could put a picture of yourself going on a shopping trip. You could do all kinds of really neat things. And I have a whole list of them in the blog post below. Okay, around the web. I think, so this is how it looks on the back end. Um, you can add, I have a video. If you can do a video, do a video. People love videos. Um, yeah, so this is where you can do your add your new link. Um, so I have my website, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter. Now, I should get rid of, t like I have a, a paperly people Twitter, so it's fine. Um, I have a paperly people Instagram, but if I was doing this with my own personal Instagram, I wouldn't actually put that link there because my Instagram is full of pictures of children and pets. That would not be something that I would link to. So you want to pick one or two that you're going to be really involved in and then make sure that you're doing that. You don't have to list everyone you have if one of them is just a placeholder. Okay uh shop members you want to be very careful of shop members etsy doesn't mind if you get help if you have administrative help if you have manufacturing help no matter what but they like you to disclose it here and so you need to make sure you do that product oh see they have a production partner soap and more okay so they're getting the essential oils from a calgary company which is awesome and then they're marketing them in conjunction with their bracelets perfect we know exactly etsy most people don't come down here let's be honest but etsy sometimes will check and that's amazing shop policies let's talk about this you may have weird ones like these guys may say if they sell mostly to the united states they may have a little extra section that's in there about the fact that it takes a little while um to ship because we're shipping canada post blah 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 in general, most of us can do this. Now, some of you gals have super, super long delivery times. Like, say you uh, are handmade and you don't actually start even making it for three weeks. You have like a three-week delay and then it's going to take time after that. You would want to make sure to put that in there. Okay. I love that they have frequently asked questions. Not only is this a good way to, um, uh, you know, like, Really, they're talking about care instructions. They're talking about custom and personalized orders. They could also put, you know, like, where did they source these beads from? You know, where do they get the lava beads? Are they special lava beads? Why are some of them lava beads and some of them are shiny beads? Um, oh, do any of them have special colors? Like, are, are some of them better for this or that? So, they could put all of that in there and that would make a huge difference. What you're doing is you're trying to attract different types of people. Some people do not care anything about this. They're just buying a gift for a friend. They're just going to do that. Some people really care. They'll read everything. They'll read your shipping. They'll read your frequently asked questions. They'll do all that. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to provide information for 
buyers so that they feel comfortable working with you and your shop. And um, the nice thing for me, and this is why I'm just putting this out there, I think that you can do this yourself, or if you feel like you can't do this yourself, then trade, like have a shop friend and you do an audit of her shop and she does an audit of your shop and that way you can trade. But um, the thing about this is once you do this, there are only two places. Oh, shoot, I forgot this one. I'm so sorry. Up here, this announcement, they show the date of this, right? They show the date of this here. So I do feel like you should do this announcement. And um, these guys say that they offer custom size bracelets. Um, they do allow you to take your oils everywhere. Theirs is very good customer facing, like what's in it for you. You can take your essential oils with you anyway. Um, and then they go into, you know, uh, a little bit more about the process and things like that. I would, I have found that most people are doing the, and it's so cute. I knew this, um, gentleman years ago who said, you're weeing all over them. We make these bracelets from, we source these from, we are the, our shop is, and people don't really care about you at all. Everybody wants to know what's in it for them. So you want to craft this announcement as a what's in it for them. Now, I did it really copyrighty, and I did what's called a hero's journey, and I'm like, it's hard to find the perfect planner, and I know I have hundreds of them, and I've been searching. Now, that is about me, but what they're doing with the hero's journey is they're able to put their self in my place and go, oh my gosh, that's exactly the circumstance that I'm in. Um, so these guys could do something like, have you been looking for a way to take your, um, you know, are you sick of getting to the to the lacrosse game and realizing you forgot to put on your bug spray essential oils or you know do you find yourself getting tired in the afternoon and could use a little essential oil pick me up or you know so you want to paint a picture in this of how your product is going to solve problems for them and i'm actually really glad we ended with this because i do think that may be a little bit of the most confusing part of the whole thing yeah, your shop is about you, but this announcement should be about them. You can put your sales in there and things like that, too. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacob said, marketing hopefully. If you like this, make sure to hit the like button. And if you like videos like this, at the end, make sure to subscribe.